Good morning, everyone. Good to be with you this morning. We are delighted uh, today to be commissioning Matt and Tor Bush with Thetford Vineyard. We've been looking forward to this morning for so long. Um, if you're part of um, church with us already, you'll know that Matt and Tor were ready to be commissioned just as lockdown happened. We put all that on hold, um, but we're ready now. I know that they're like raring to go, can't wait. So this is their commissioning moment and we're expectant for the Holy Spirit to come um, and be with us and be with you as we go through um, this time with them. But we thought we'd jump in, maybe you'd just like to hear a little bit of their story. Like this is a bit weird because we've known each other a long time, but I know people will just love to be reminded um, just of what God's been doing. Because like you don't wake up one morning and think, oh, I'm going to plant a church. There's been a journey for you guys, hasn't there? So maybe you just tell us a little bit about how that journey began. What, how did God like get you to this point? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. Uh, as you say, for, for, for most people, it doesn't work like that. And Perhaps our thought was that a lot of people actually, in fact, um, wake up or be uh, are born knowing that they're going to plant a church or, or lead a church. That would be easier, wouldn't it? Uh, it would be easier. <laughs> um, certainly for us, that's just not our story. Uh, we never felt called to leadership. We never felt called to plant a church from, from day one. Um, our story is, is the story of many others, that we're broken people that said yes to Jesus. And so... You know, our story is a journey of, of, of multiple yeses to Jesus. Um, and as we, of course, first said yes to Jesus, we accepted him into our lives. He began a great healing work in our hearts. And there came a point when, when, when we realised that wasn't really enough for us, when, when God was challenging us and inviting us into, into deeper and fuller relationship with him. Um, and we, we got to a stage individually, I think, and then eventually collectively, in which we, we just gave it all up and we just said, Jesus, whatever it means, take it. Sure. We don't want it anymore. <laughs> we don't want to be in control. And, and then what happened was, um, as, as God started to, 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 to re reveal really his heart for, for those around us, mm. um, I think it's true that God always draws us to himself for the sake of others and mm. our transformation ultimately um, is to benefit those around us. Mm. God, God calls us into his presence and he sends us out. Mm. And so our initial call, we believe, and a call that we still hold on to more than and above anything else is a call to love, a call to loving our neighbour, a call to loving our community. Yeah. And so over the last two years, really, three years, we've been doing that in small ways as God has invited us to to do simple things, mm -hmm. to get to know our names, to know their names, to know what they do, to know their dreams and hopes, mm -hmm. and then invest in them without agenda, but just for the mm -hmm. sake of love. And so we've been hosting monthly community meals every month. For two years we've been doing that. And it's been a great time in which, which, which we've got to know our neighbours. Neighbours have become our friends. And, and, and we've been stepping out in those small ways. And, and, and in doing that, there's been an invitation to then dream about what, that might mean yeah. um, in terms of, of church planting, yeah, but yeah. but above and beyond everything else, we just we just we're, we're broken people. Um, <laughs> saying yes to Jesus. Saying yes to Jesus. That's Hold that dream for Thetford, because I'd mm. love to come back to that. But what I've seen in you both is is just your obedience to all those little yeses. I remember. Um, tour right at the beginning, you coming excitedly telling me that you and your kids have baked cakes for the street, and that's, <laughs> I know you've done loads of that since. But I remember the first time you did that. Maybe just talk a little bit. Um, what? Just to that encouragement to people to do the little yes, because because your little yeses have grown into something huge. But it doesn't always, does it? But what what does that look like? How do you hear God and act on that? Um, well, for me, I just I always think back to that story in the Bible where the little boy brings his pat lunch and gives it to Jesus. And I think sometimes we feel like we have to have something huge. Um, and actually, you know, that little boy in the Bible brought his pat lunch to Jesus, and Je it was Jesus who then did something with that. And I yeah. think it's really important to keep that picture in your mind when you're doing yeah. anything. So it's just yeah. what have you got? Um, and when I was that very first time I did that, I was thinking I was a mum, I was at home. I felt quite disconnected from being able to do anything. I'd been taken out of the world of work. You know, I just mm. felt very kind of, Jesus, how can I impact anybody? I'm stuck in the house you know, with children and doing this. And um, the real thing I felt the Holy Spirit say to me is, well, what can you do? 
I thought, well, I can bake cakes, you know, that's something I love to do. And I'd see a neighbour walk past every day, and so then I would, okay, well, I can bake him a cake. And then, you know, Elsa, uh, my daughter, went out and took out a cake to my neighbour, and that's where it began. And that that mentality has not changed, even, mm-hmm. you know, up to now with church planting. Mm-hmm. Well, what can you do? Well, actually, at the moment, we can orient our lives to do that. Our work life looks like this, our financial life looks like this. Actually, Jesus, we're going to give you this now. What will you do with it? And it's no different. It's yeah. just because we're giving him more time or more energy, whatever. It's it's always the same because what we give is so little compared to what Jesus does with it. Um, church plant is just an extension of that very simple principle. Yeah. I love that. I love it. A simple yes and mm. let Jesus do what he'll do. Mm. So, Matt, you said you know, that these many yeses grew into a dream for your community. Mm. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? What's your dream between you for for Thetford and what you'd love to see God do there. Tell us a little bit, but some people won't maybe know Thetford so well. Yeah, so, um, I mean, our dream ultimately is that we would build authentic, loving communities that, that come fully alive in Jesus and then take that life into a hurting and, and broken Thetford. Um, and that's not a unique dream for Thetford. I think that's God's heart for all communities. Sure. Um, but, but we've grown to love Thetford. Um, Thetford, like many market towns in Norfolk and Suffolk, is 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 uh, sometimes looked down upon, or at least is facing an increased uh, risk of, of social and economic deprivation. And yeah. and going forward, we know that it's going to be something that continues and, and probably deepens um, with the the um, fallout from from COVID nineteen and, and the funding issues that will no doubt um, occur. And and we just want to be available yeah. um, a while back some people may have, have watched the film but um, uh, the vineyard produced a film called Legacy which is all about um, our history as a movement uh, but what I found most encouraging really was was towards the end of the film they spoke to Carol Wimber about um, what she sees the future holding for us and if you go back and watch that film it's, it's, it's actually quite moving in what we know is going on right now yeah. Um, and she encourages us, implores us all as individuals, and, and we definitely um, felt that word come to us strongly, is that we need to get in our place, yeah. we need to be available, we need to be ready. And um, of course, things look a bit different right now because of lockdown, mm-hmm. and we've had to relinquish all our plans, mm-hmm. in many ways, lay down all our dreams and hopes. Um, but we have done that gladly because church planting was never our idea. It was always God's idea, and we're not about to relinquish control from, from, from him or wrestle control back from him right now, mm-hmm. um, and we want to abandon control. Mm-hmm. And we see this as a, a tremendous opportunity to do that, mm-hmm. to hold true to the, to, to the, to the call to love. Mm-hmm. There's no greater opportunity right now than to love people. Of course we want to see people come to know Jesus. Of course we want to see statistics change, crime to go down, families to stay together, all those things. But as Tor said, what have we got? What's in our hands? And right now we're a little bit restricted and we have a, a, a fresh opportunity to be creative and work in partnership with the Holy Spirit and we're prepared to do whatever it takes really. Because people yeah. might say church planting in lockdown is like madness. <laughs> yeah, it probably is, yeah. But there's something of the Lord in this, yeah. isn't there? And, and we see that too. And, yeah. Absolutely. We, we have to be hopeful. We have oh, to be totally. hopeful. Uh, for We're hopeful next. for you and with you. <laughs> um, there are challenges, um, but again, it's just an opportunity to work in partnership with the Holy Spirit and with, with Jesus. Holy Spirit is not confused by no. Zoom. He's not confused by lockdown. Absolutely. Um, and people are desperate for community right now. Yeah. People are, are isolated. People are yeah. in need. Yeah. Um, and ultimately. They need Jesus, and, yeah. um, and we just want to be available to, to partner with God in, in sharing that message of truth and hope. Yeah, and um, it feels um, for me that the the fact that you're going during lockdown is significant in mm. itself. That you know that just what you were saying about laying down control, even the date of your commissioning has all been like muddled up in this, and yet that call that you have is so strong, the passion that you hold. For the Lord and for your town is, is really evident to us. So, How might we be praying for you, helping you? Like, what can we do? Like, 
but can we say firstly personally mm -hmm. we're going to miss you we will. Yes. <laughs> we've known you guys for 10 years and i know you've begun that separation over the last couple of years but you know we've done life together in some way over all this time but i know we speak for many people who'll be watching um who are you know there's there's a loss as you go but but we we embrace that loss gladly <laughs> because we know that god will yeah. do much but how might we stay engaged what can we do to help you guys as you go um i think the first thing i would say is just pray for us because one thing about church planting and anything where you're stepping out and doing something um really at that sort of front line of of what the holy spirit's asking you to do is that there will of course be a counter attack sure um I, we'd really appreciate prayer for us as a couple yeah. um protection for our marriage protection for our children yeah. um and um just that um in the kind of spiritual aspect that um, that the Holy Spirit will just be going ahead of us and everything. Yeah. I think that's yeah. what I would say. Yeah. Yeah. That we would hear the voice of God and we would be obedient when it comes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and, and that same prayer for, for those who will go with us. Because yeah. um, you've got a great us. team going with you. Yeah. Yeah. And we've been fortunate that, 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 that God has been going, he's already gone ahead of us because it, it feels, and we were just talking about this last night, it feels like... Um, God is not kind of scattering us as seed, but almost he's planting out seedlings. And yeah, there's yeah. been foundational work that's yeah. gone on for years now yeah. um, in, in individuals and us collectively as a community. Yeah. Um, and this feels right for the right time. So, but yes, absolutely pray for us is the most important thing. Yeah. Um, the other thing, of course, that people may do is, is just, is just um, stay engaged with us, yes. um, stay connected with us. Um, You're not vanishing. No, <laughs> it's just we're, we're 20 miles away, um, yeah. and we'd, we'd love to hear from people. Ring us up, ask us how we are. Yeah, um, yeah just check in on us. Check we're okay. <laughs> um, we, Still flying the yeah, flag. Um, and when we're able, maybe you know, um, take me out for a beer or something. That would be great. Good. Um, that's <laughs> always people welcome. People getting their diaries out yes, already. Absolutely, we can book that in in a few months' time. Yeah. Um, and of course, there's always the opportunity if, if people feel prompted to give financially. Mm -hmm. Right now, that's actually quite difficult. We can't set up a bank account. Um, because, uh, the challenges. Yeah, because, right, so no. <laughs> because banking's, um, uh, setting up new bank accounts is reserved for, for, for uh, uh, non-essential yeah. banking services because but of lockdown. people could pledge. Yeah, us. we'd encourage people to, pl to pledge. Yeah. Sure. And, and if they find that helpful, um, they can get in contact with us and do that, yeah. or they can just ring fence some money for us. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. But that's, that's obviously up to God and up yeah, to them. But, yeah. but the most important thing is to pray for us yeah. and to stay yes. connected. Yeah. Yeah, we'd love that. Yeah. 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 We're going to um, just read the, the commissioning statement um, over you guys um, in a moment. Is there anything else that you'd love to say? Um, I would just love to echo a kind of what you've just shared there, really, and just saying that um, this church has been part of our lives for actually 14 years, is almost 14, 14 years. years. Yeah. So um, we started coming down here when we were dating. Yeah. Tor was down here <laughs> yes. um, with her mum and, and I was yeah. um, commuting from York as I was university there. And yeah. it's been a big part of our journey. And um, we just want to encourage others in, in the community here at, at, at West Suffolk just to keep saying yes to Jesus. Yeah. 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 You don't have to plant the church. It's not God's call for everyone. Yeah. Um, but, but God is inviting us all to, to love our neighbours and to, to just be obedient in the small things and then he's going to trust us with the big things. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. There's no greater time right now than to say yes to Jesus. Yeah. Um, and we need to be in our place. Yes. So I'd encourage people, however painful that is at first, because it does hurt. There's a sacrifice, huh? Um, yeah. As God works in our hearts, it yeah. always um, involves healing pain. But I would encourage people to say yes to Jesus. Just embrace it. Absolutely. Which is what we've it. seen you guys do, and it's been a joy yeah. to be yeah. part of your journey. Yeah. Can we commission you? Why not? As the pastors <laughs> of Thetford Vineyard. Yeah. Let's let's stand. Let's be intentional, shall we? Good morning, West Suffolk Vineyard. Uh, so thrilled to be able to just gate crash your service this morning and give a little message to to Matt and Tor. My name's Craig, and this is Hannah. Together, we lead Gateway Vineyard church with sites in Norwich and Beckles and we also lead the East Anglia area. As Christians, as followers of Jesus, we believe that God has plans and purposes for every single one of us and there's no greater joy as leaders as we see people discern that and over time journey with him and get to a point where they say yes 
to what he's asking them to step into, whether it be in small ways or in big ways. And it's been a joy to see over the last couple of years, although I know the journey has been way longer than that, Matt and Tor just bring their yes to Jesus. And so Matt, Tor, we just want to encourage you to use everything that God's put in your heart, everything he's sown into you, to take all that he's put in your hand and to run this race. We are cheering you on and can't wait to see what God is going to do um, through you guys in Thetford. Mm, yeah, definitely. And you do need to know that we are right behind you. We're praying for you. Uh, we're just cheering you on and we are so excited to have a, another vineyard in Norfolk. You're our neighbours, so we're so excited by that. And you may have heard us share our heart a little bit last week in the service, just about what is our heart for the East Anglia area. And it's to see churches planted into every community. It's to see sites brought up in different communities. It's to see life groups and small groups and kingships in every community. It's to see people come alive in their workplace, in the school, and just simply be salt and light. And so we're thrilled for another church plant. And it may be that this has got you guys listening to this and something's starting to stir in you about uh, being at another site, another plant, another life group, somewhere in a different community. And we just want to encourage that. We're so thrilled what you guys are doing at West Suffolk. We're so excited for you guys, Matt and Tor, and we are praying for you. So this is a commissioning letter from um, Vineyard Churches and from us um, as your sending church. And uh, we'll read this. It's really important to, you know, read this in full slow so that you understand but it's also helpful for everybody else to understand what a commissioning of a vineyard church um, is and what it means and your responsibilities uh, that you'll be taking on and uh, we'll print out a copy of this and, and send one with you so you can put it up in your study in your house or whatever you'd like <laughs> to, to be do reminded. With it. <laughs> and, and they are words to ponder uh, and just you know churches as, as you're listening you know these are weighty words and and we know we know in the bottom of our hearts that, that Matt and Tor have weighed all of this in their hearts and that their yes is um, genuine and heartfelt. Um, but let's do it, shall we? So, dear Matt and Tor, you have been called by God to work within the wider family of the vineyard as a servant and shepherd among the people of Thetford and the surrounding area to whom you are sent. You must set the Lord Jesus, the Good Shepherd, the Chief Shepherd, always before you as the pattern and model of your calling, caring for the people God commits to your charge. You are to proclaim the word of the Lord, to preach and demonstrate the good news of the kingdom, and to call men and women to submit to the King Jesus in repentance and faith. You are to heal the sick, to cast out demons, to feed the hungry, to look after orphans and widows, to demonstrate Christ's love for the poor by loving them, touching their lives and meeting their needs as the Lord gives you grace. You are to lead the people in worship and prayer, to fast and intercede for them, to offer them love, mercy, acceptance and healing. You are to teach and encourage them by word and example, to bless them in the name of the Lord. In the name of our Lord and Master, we remind you of the greatness of the trust now committed to your charge, about which you have been taught and trained in preparation for this ministry. You are to be a messenger, watchman and steward of the Lord. You are to teach, to admonish, to correct, to rebuke and to feed the Lord's family. You are to train God's people for the work of ministry so that they are equipped to serve the living God in a variety of places and ways. Always remember with profound gratitude that the treasure entrusted to you is Christ's own flock, bought through the shedding of his blood on the cross. Remember that the people who you are to gather and serve are one with him. They are his body. Serve them with joy, build them up in their faith, 
and do all in your power to bring them to the loving, consecrated, costly obedience to Christ. You cannot bear the weight of this privilege and responsibility in your own strength, but only by the grace and power of God. So each day ask the Lord earnestly and humbly to fill you with his Holy Spirit, to enlarge and enlighten your understanding of the scriptures so that you may be stronger and more mature in your ministry as you fashion your lives and those of your people on the word of God, to give you direction and wisdom from on high as you lead the people of God. We know full well that long ago you began to weigh and ponder all of this and that you are fully determined by the grace of God to give yourself wholly to this work and to, to devote your best powers of mind and spirit in order to fulfil your calling. And finally, as it says in the Bible in 1 Corinthians 15, Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, stand firm, let nothing move you. Always, gives your, always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord, because you know that your labour in the Lord is not in vain. And so Matt and Tor, we commission you as the leaders of Thetford Vineyard, and we are just delighted. <laughs> and I want to give you a big hug, and I can't, but we can give you a big hug. And Nomi, we would all be <laughs> We'd love to pray with you as well, somehow distanced. It feels very strange not to lay hands on you, but um, but let's pray. And and church, why don't you join in? I know it's sometimes a bit weird at home, but we have seen over and over again that the Holy Spirit does not care that there is a physical distance between us. That as you pray, as you stretch out your hand, as you join in with with what we're praying here, the Holy Spirit will um, come and just honour uh, your involvement in this. So let's let's pray. Let's pray. Let's calm Holy Spirit. Oh, it's calm Holy Spirit. It's yeah, just some more of your Holy power, Spirit. Lord. Lord, as Matt and Tor absorb these words of the commissioning, as they read them at their leisure later on, as over the years they're reminded of how it is that they've been commissioned, who has commissioned them. Lord, we just pray for your spirit just to keep empowering them, keep encouraging them day by day, step by step. As they keep saying their little yeses to you, Lord, we just pray for your presence with them all this time. I speak authority over you both, the authority of the Lord, that, that your words would cut through the mess of the enemy in people's lives that you would bring clarity and truth and healing and freedom and Jesus would you give them eyes to see and ears to hear to know where you're working to join in with what you're already doing I pray for just increased creative vision Jesus of what you see as you look at Thetford would you reveal to them a vision bigger than they have right now, and we thank you for what they carry right now. But Lord, I ask for more for them. It's calm, Holy Spirit. I pray they would hear your voice clearly. And as I said that they want to be carriers of your love, I, I pray that specifically over them that they will be commissioned to be carriers of your love everywhere they find themselves. But more than that, that they would teach and train others to do that. That this domino effect of love would just ripple out. It's more, Lord. And I pray that that love would look like healing the sick and casting out demons. It would look like feeding the poor, binding up the brokenhearted. Thank you, Jesus. We pray for Elsa and Jacob. We pray for this family unit. 
We know, Lord, that you send families. Would you protect them? Thank you that you've drawn the children into to what you're doing here. So wherever they are right now, in this moment, would your spirit fall on them too? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I pray God would bless your teaching gifts. I pray to you for a wisdom for you both. A wisdom beyond your own personal experiences. Just to see what God sees. Thank you, Lord. And I pray for food and joy and laughter and singing and dancing. I pray for many parties for that exuberant joy that they carry, Lord, to be um, just like the taps put on full. <laughs> we pray for your team as you stand here and represent others. We pray, Father, that you would strengthen their team, that they would be solid in their call to serve the vision that you've given Mantor. And I pray for, for gifts. Would you, would you spread out your gifts among that team that each of them would be able to come and take their place and know their part? And I pray for courage, for courage for every person that will stand alongside them. Thank you, Jesus. And I ask for both of them that you would grow that pastor's heart in them as they feel the, just the weight, of, um, the weight of that responsibility, and in a good way, would you grow their pastor's hearts? To care for the flock that, that you will send them, the flock that's right around them on their street. Matt, God's going to increase your teaching gifts, but he's going to just bring more of the prophetic to you. And Tor, God's going to increase your prophetic gifts and he's going to bring more teaching gifts to you. And then there are those things that you each have that the other doesn't, that complement one another. And I pray, Father, that you would help them work out how that fits together. Help them play to their strengths in the kingdom. Thank you, Jesus. And now anoint them, Lord, and pour out your spirit. Yes. So I want to lay my hands on you. <laughs> Jesus is laying his hand on your head right now. Yeah. Yes. Jesus, as you anoint them for ministry, would you equip them with everything they need? It's calm, Holy Spirit, pour out your spirit now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And the people said, Amen. 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 <laughs> oh, that's oh, that's great. <laughs> Oh, well, it's, a, it's like an end of one journey, but the beginning of another, and um, we want to stay in touch. We're delighted that you're joining the East Anglia team of pastors, so we'll get to <laughs> hang out with you in different ways. Um, but uh, heartfelt love from us, and I know from the whole church family, yes. and um, how exciting to have a new vineyard church just down the road. Okay. Um, it's just mm -hmm. wonderful.